I know we may make things look so easy and stuff on social media, but things are really hard. But you have to keep pushing it because if you spread more positivity, it works out in the long run. Maybe it's, it sounds like a fairy tale. Oh, when we're doing that for cello, oh, it's going well, it's going well. But before we even started doing that for cello, we was doing other events. All of them flop. For the past, the first two years, every event we did in Ghana, it didn't go well. But because it didn't go well, you learn from it. You take this out, you fix this, you change this. So the success, I don't think we're success, we're not successful yet, but the future is bright. We have a lot more to do. My name is Kenneth Japon Jr. Everybody calls me Kenny. Um, I'm the general manager of Kent City Group and also co-founder of Culture Management Group, which is the one of the events that we do is Afrochello. I'm a piano brunch, soul food Sunday, fashion night out, and Kevin. I was born and raised in the U.S. Uh, I moved to Ghana 2014. But before that, I used to come to Ghana all the time for the holidays. Um, my childhood was great. Um, I may sound cliche and whatnot, but um, growing up in the U.S. with both parents, so. Um, they always used to say, like, you need to know where you come from. So they used to always teach us tree, like, make sure you can understand tree, you can speak tree, because we need to always understand the roots of where we're coming from, where we're going. And I went to school in the Bronx, Bronx Leisure Academy too, for high school. Then I went to Utica College of Syracuse. I have a degree in management and human resources. Then I went to Johnson & Wales University, Rhode Island, Providence campus for my master's. I also have an MBA in business management. My decision to move back to Ghana is interesting because my parents used to tell me, come to Ghana, work for me, work for me and all that stuff. I'm like, no. But then um, in May 2014, after grad school, two of my classmates were from China. So they said they moved to Ghana. So I was wondering why are they coming to Ghana? So they were like, oh, their parents were here. And this was their first time. They don't speak the language. Even their English wasn't that good. So I'm like, whoa, that doesn't make sense. So let me come with them. So in June of 2014, I came to Ghana with them and then they stayed. And I'm like, oh no, this doesn't make sense that, um, a f not because it's a foreigner, but they don't, it's their first time ever coming here and they want to live in Ghana. I'm like, you know what, let me do the same thing. So I actually went back to the US. I packed everything in my car and then October, 2014, I moved to Ghana and I just started working here. So I'm a proud member of Five Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, Omicron Alpha, Chapter, Utica College of Syracuse. I pledged spring 2011, I'm a solo. It's great that a lot of Greeks are coming back to Ghana. We actually, it's interesting you mentioned that because um, myself, Kofi, and another brother, Terry and Anthony, we actually started a Sigma chapter in Ghana. We was actually eating at Starbite a couple of years ago. And we was like, why don't we try to have a Sigma chapter here? Because we want people to understand the Greek culture and whatnot. But besides that, there's other Divine Nines who are also here. Um, SG Rose, the Deltas, our sisters, the Zetas. Um, Kappas, Omegas, they're all here, Alphas as well, Iota. So I think it's good that as the network is also being built and they also, a lot of them too have chapters, not just even in Ghana, but in L Liberia and Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, like all across the continent, even within the West Africa region and Southern Africa as well too. Um, so what we do in our fraternity, we're all about community service, brotherhood, scholarship, and service. So we empower people and also help people. Like a good example, if we see somebody in the street that needs help, I'll give the perfect example. So two years ago on my birthday, I decided to, for my birthday, just give out food, right? I know everybody does it, give out food, nothing. But at airport, and there was a young guy and I gave him the food. And then he's like, oh, if I eat today, uh, what about tomorrow? So I'm like, huh, what are you talking about? So then um, I spoke to the other guys around and then it was like, oh, um, he's here because he needs help with his school fees. So like he's hawking in the daytime and trying to go to school. Young guy, like not even 10. So I'm like, really? I'm like, so how much is your school fees? He's like 186 cities. I'm like, what, really? I'm like, so what he said, like triggered him, like if he eats today, what about tomorrow? So I'm like, you know what? I won't give you the money, but to give me your phone number or somebody's number and I go to the school with you, and then I'll pay. So I actually like paid the school fees for him or whatnot. I saw that's part of the brotherhood of the Five Beta Second Fraternity. So if you see somebody in need or somebody in help, you can't just stay there and just like, oh, do it. Or you're not gonna do it. But if it's within your heart and you wanna do something, just do it. But don't, don't do it and just put it on camera. Oh, I gave somebody a scholarship to school. When I found out that the first president of Ghana is a member of Five Beta Second Fraternity, Lincoln chapter, I was like, whoa. And then also my partner, which is crazy, my partner, Abdul, because when he crossed, because he was in university before me. So when he crossed and 
I saw him in, in his parents' restaurant in the Bronx. He had the jacket on. I'm like, what's that? He said, do your research. So when I did my research and I found that Carmen Krummer too and Nima Ezekiel were like whole different, different, different presidents were part of it. And I was like, you know what? Let me do my research and see what this um, organization is about and if it fits me to be part of it or whatnot. Five most things to do in Ghana. I think definitely, if you're in a crash, you go to Mokala. Mokala early in the morning, like around like four or five o'clock in the morning. See how like people are doing the trading before even the, the sun comes up. You could go to the art center, see the different heritage, Carmen Krumah Museum, Blue Fire, Five Better Sigma Maternity. Go check out the museum. Go to From Back if it's something in the evening. And also if you leave outside of a crash, definitely go to Cape Coast, Amino Castle, Shah Hills, Boti Falls, like, or Mole National Park, it depending on the resource or depending on the time or how long you'll be in the country for, you should definitely like check out different places, not just stay in Accra. Some things not to do when you travel to Ghana is, the, I think it's the basic rule of thumb, when you're not just in Ghana, if you go to even New York. So like, if you go to New York and you go downtown and you're looking in the air like this, it's looking, wow, wow, wow. Everybody will know that you're not from there. Or if you come to Accra and you're like, what's that? What's that? What's that? People know you're not from there. So I think you just be organic. So I don't think there's no five things you could do or you can't do when you come here. It's just the threat on the, tra um, the travel rule of thumb. Like before you go anywhere, not just Ghana, but even other countries, like check your surroundings, where you're at. It's not like you're flashing money and things like that, jewelry, depending where you're at. So it's not just if you're in Ghana, it's across the world. My father is a renowned politician, Andrew Kenny Japan, member of, of Asin Central, um, MP. We have a food truck, right? And when we started doing the food truck, the rest of the guys went back to the US. So actually, when I get off of work, I used to drive the food truck to Twist. And I'll park the truck there and have like four of the guys working in the truck, and I'll go in a club party or whatnot. Then before the people are leaving, I'll go to the truck. And I'm telling them, oh, we have chicken, we have burgers and things like that trying to sell. The reason I'm saying this is because that time nobody really knew me. But then I went on a TV show with my dad and it was like, oh, but that's your father. Oh, why are you selling burgers? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> I'm trying to make money. So it's not about who my parents is or who and whatnot. But um, in the general, I separate like the politics and the business because I'm not a politician or anything like that, but I don't get too much involved in politics. But if I have to, like because of work, because I work for Kansas City Media, like if we're doing reporting and whatnot, I'll help out and whatnot. So, but I separate that, like even my father's brand and what I'm doing separately because I can't just go anywhere and say, oh, my father's an honorable candidate in Japan, so you have to give me this. So literally, if everywhere I go, I'm just, I'm just sitting there waiting quietly and whatnot. Because if I was in America, I can't go somewhere and tell, oh, my father's honorable candidate in Japan, so you have to give me this, you have to do this. You have to build your own relationship with people and build your own brand. You know, I think I'm really, really happy with my decision moving to Ghana. To be honest, the first two and a half years was really hard because that time I didn't get the, the work ethic of the people, the system, how things work. So I used to like, used to frustrate me, like, I'm out. I'll call my mom, she was in America. I'll call some of my siblings. Oh, I can't stay here now, I'm leaving, I'm leaving. But they kept pushing me, I just stay. And I think I it's good that I listened to the advice because like in the long run that, um, that I stayed and I went through the hard time. So now if any little thing, like oh, it doesn't really bother me. Like an example, when I was here, the first year and a half, the light used to go off a lot, I think so, right? So I'm like, oh man, like I was panicking, what, what to do, what to do? So fast forward, one of my cousins, he moved to Ghana and we was living together. As soon as the light goes off, he's like, he's leaving, he's going to a hotel. I started laughing because he was used to, now that, not the hard times, but when the light or water and everything is not working, he, was, he wasn't used to it. But because I was used to it from when I first got here and it wasn't working, so now any little thing like, oh, you, can, you have to adjust and adapt to it, but don't assimilate. December in Ghana, what a town to be alive. I think it's a lot of different things, a lot of different events going on. Shout out to Culture Management Group, you know, Africella covered. But it's other events that go, is going on. So I think you should try and attend different events as much as possible, or even network with people, because it's not just about going out and having fun. Like use Africella as an example. We, this is our sixth year in business with the fifth Africella, and people have been coming back to back. So, what do you want them to do if they keep coming back to back and they can't be doing the same thing? So you have to explore. Like maybe if you came to, you did a tour in Accra 
Now this year when you come, try and go to Kumase, try to go to Tamale, try to go to different parts of the country, but try to explore and network with different people so that we can all learn from each other because the knowledge that maybe one individual may have, a person here may not have, or vice versa. A person may have the knowledge here, a person that's coming in from the diaspora won't have it. So if you work and network together, you can definitely accomplish things. I know we may make things look so easy and stuff on social media, but the thing is really hard. But you have to keep pushing it because if you spread more positivity, it works out in the long run. Maybe it's, it sounds like a fairy tale. Oh, when we're doing that for cello, oh, it's going well, it's going well. But before we even started doing that for cello, we was doing other events. All of them flop. But the, past, the first two years, every event we did in Ghana, it didn't go well. But because it didn't go well, you learn from it. You take this out, you fix this, you change this. So the success, I don't think we're success, we're not successful yet, but the future is bright. We have a lot more to do. Any advice that uh, I can give any person from the diaspora or anybody in general want to do business, you have to be hands-on in Ghana, quite unfortunately. You have to be hands-on and you can't say you're giving this money or this thing to someone and you're not here. Four days ago, some guy on my Snapchat was like, oh, hi, how you doing? I'm like, what's up? Then he's like, oh, what business can he do in Ghana? I'm like, there's so many different businesses, but I can't give you no advice. And he's like, why? So then he sent me a voice and oh, Charlie, why are you to do that? And I was, oh no, because I want you to actually come here, right? You can come here and you can look around and see the loopholes or things that could be done. But if I sit here and like, oh, because it worked for me, or come do this, come do this, is a disservice to you. So anybody from the diaspora, come to the country, come to the continent, stay here. Maybe if it's the holiday season, because there's a lot of people going, a lot of things and a lot of people here, you could do that. But then after, you just stay for like maybe a week or two after and you can see like things that could be done and whatnot. But that's the, that's the best advice I think I could give anyone. You have to come here and feel it and touch it, see it, smell it before you can even start any business here. Some of the challenges I faced when I relocated was just how the work ethic, because I'm from New York, we walking fast, boom, 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 but Ghana, everybody's dragging their feet, oh, oh. And the thing I didn't understand first, give it to God, everything, give it to God, for my yam, for my yam. I'm like, what is it, give it to God? Because if you give it to God, cool, I, I go to church and I'm religious and everything like that, but you can say, give it to God, but if you don't help yourself, God will never help you. So like, people used to always give that, oh, give it to God, oh, aha, yeah, yeah, this, huh? oh, we don't do it like this here. It's like that, but they know they're doing the wrong thing. But they're like, oh, it's not like that. Or they take longer to do things. That was the, like, Tijuana is the hardest part, relocating to Ghana. But after some time, I think I was able to understand it because, and I want to thank my parents because I remember when I came to Ghana 2011 for an internship, I was living in Tema. So the first two weeks, the driver used to bring me to work. And then the third week, my dad was like, no, no more drive, find your way to work. So I used to take the truck truck from Tema here. So three different trotros. Well, technically it was four, because when you get to Accra, you have to change out of Accra Mall to Medina. And it was hot in there. But that part didn't even matter, right? The part that now I can start relating to people more was when it rained. By the time you get to work, when you're off for everything, your clothes and everything is soaked. So you get to understand now, before, before, like, if somebody was late to work, oh, they give it an excuse. But when it rained, and because I took Trotro and I understood that when it rained, not everything is messed up because the, the, the transportation network, now you have to wait for one um, van for another one for another one. So, but the future is bright here. Um, my absolute favorite thing while living in Ghana is the sun. Like, every day is hot. The sun is shining. That's why I'm on social media. I always say, good morning, good morning, good morning. Or the time to be alive. The sun is shining. So I think the sun, because coming from New York, it's cold. It's cold like for at least three, four months of the year. But here, even if it's cold, it's because it's raining. Like today it's hot, but it's not too hot. <laughs> Afrochella is a culture festival that we started in 2017. It was actually Abdul's idea. But before that, like I was saying earlier, we started doing events in Ghana, but before that, I was doing events in America too, Abdu as well. We have on other partners. And the two years I was doing events in Ghana, it, it didn't go well. Everything flopped. We even have a we had a show at Shiny Beach, December 26, 2015. Even the artists didn't show up. That's how bad it was. But we was going out in the evening, 
then the guys would sleep in the daytime but because i was living in ghana i was working in the daytime so then one day it was 11 of us at my house and we were sitting at the table and we was like what can we do now that we've lost so much in ghana to readjust of what we're doing the events and things that we had planned and it wasn't going well and i was like why don't we try and do a festival at that time it was only 10 regions in ghana so we we're like let's try and highlight the let's try and highlight the different regions in ghana and I was like, oh yeah, why not? But then the other guys at their table, the other nine was like, no, no, it's not going to work because, which I don't blame them up to tell, I don't blame them because of the other events that we did before and that didn't work out. So he left and went back to the U.S. So in February 2017, he called me and said, oh, um, he, hasn't, um, he found a venue. I'm like, venue? You're all the way in New York. I'm in a cry. You're telling me you found a venue? So I'm like, ah, cool. So on my break, I'll go there. So I went to Polo Club and I looked at it, took a video, sent it to him. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Then so from that February, we started planning it. So then, like in our first interview, when we ever did our first interview for Africella at Polo, face to face, um, it was myself, Abdul, Edward, Emmanuel, and Vanel. We started, then we started planning it, the event. Then we added Kwame and Alvin too, because it was giving us the office spaces at BB&Z. And then it's us seven collectively started planning the festival. So Afrochella is actually like our side job. So everybody else in the team, like Abdul works in the medical field. Edward does branding. Um, Alvin and Kwame runs the Daily Guide newspaper on DGN, which is also BBNZ as well too. And then Vanel is an architect. And Emmanuel works for an NGO and whatnot. And then I do Kent City Media and Cold Store. We all come from different type backgrounds and we came together to do the festival. And um, we need to exceed expectations. Some of the new targets are uh, going to different countries doing pop-ups. So the, we have the Road to Africella series. So we go to different countries and then we lead all the traffic back to Ghana. So this year we did Cote d'Ivoire in June and we did um, South Africa in October which will lead the people to Accra in December. So um, in the near future, we have other countries too, so stay tuned, a lot of different countries we're coming to, to do the act, um, activation for Afrochello. Culture Management Group is the mother company of everything that we do. So Afrochello Umbrella is under Culture Management Group, then we have Amo Piano and Brunch, then we have Soul Food Sunday, then we have Fashion Night Outs, then we have African Royalty Night. There's all different events. Then we have Kethem as well, too, which is a clothing line, this right here. So we have, and that as well, too. So we have different umbrellas, but Coach Management Group is the mother company, which is a branding and advertising agency company. Um, as a tourism ambassador, some of the things myself and our other partners we do is to highlight the positive angles and positive things that's going on in the country or in the continent itself. Because I remember growing up in the US, we were watching cartoons on a Saturday and the commercial, the first commercial will come in between the cartoons will be like a, um, a white lady walking with a kid like with a big stomach and it flies all around them. Oh, if you send 99 cents to this, you can help somebody in Africa. So they polluted that in our head already, like growing up, like, oh, Africa, people are living on trees, people are starving. Some people are starving and some people are not. We, all, we still need help here, but I think if we highlight more things like, oh, come to Ghana, you could do this. Go to South Africa, you could do this. Go to Cote d'Ivoire, you could do this. Go to Nigeria, you could do this. It's different, different elements that you could see within the continent, even within Ghana. Because I remember when I officially started moving to Ghana on my Instagram page in 2014, June, I posted a picture that I'll say, oh, this is where I'm moving to, the decision, I'm moving here. And if you look on the, comp the caption, so many people, where are, you, where are you going to? And I was like, Ghana, it was like, what? This is how Ghana looked like? So it was a surprise. It was actually the picture of a larger building. So if you show more of things like that, like we're not living in huts and things like that, we need to highlight that more. So that's the goal that we're trying to do, that, that we're doing as ambassadors, even before we became ambassadors. That was our overall point, to highlight, educate, inform people to come to Ghana, to see that if you come to Ghana, you can network with people, you can make money, not make money also, but also have friends, relationship. We could build longevity together. Um, Fisherman's Market is actually a cold store that I have. Well, I actually don't have, but that is a family business, but I just did the renaming of it. So we import um, fish, chicken, frozen products to Ghana and we distribute it to 
different on buy. So in the long run, what we're trying to do is trying to get more local farms that we could work with and then package their things for them. And then now we want to do the opposite, then export it to other African countries. My name is Kenneth Japon Jr. You're watching Face to Face Africa, the premier global black voice.